Yeah, what's good, y'all? It's your man, Big P. And uh, I'm just here to share my thoughts on the HBO card from last night. Uh, overall, it was, a, it was a fairly entertaining card. Um, uh, back foot boxer was on complete display um, last night in two of the fights. And then one that probably should have been. Uh, but we will get to that. Um, the first fight on the card that opened up was uh, Cletus Selden, the Hebrew Hammer, versus Eve Julius Jr. Um, Selden has been on a couple of HBO telecasts in the past, um, and is you known for being for popping dirty for a uh, PED. Um, but in two fights, I mean, he, you know, pretty much the guy, you know, the guy has power for days. You know, has lots of power. You know, and it's not really much I can get, and there's not really much I can gauge on him. At the and those two fights, and then he hit pretty hard. Um, and then you have Easy Lee's, who I've only heard of. I've never watched the fights of his before. I never caught a clip. I had meant to do it, but um, you know, just never got around to it. Um, yeah, this fight was probably one of the worst in terms of exposals. Um, it pretty much exposed the fact that. Uh, uh, Selden can't box worth a damn. Uh, I mean, that's just putting it nicely. He, he really can't. I mean, the first three rounds he was put down three times. Um, and even then, you know, you put down three times in a fight, you'd think you'd make some sort of adjustment. He did that. He did absolutely nothing. No adjustment. Um, so when Elise started boxing off his back foot, boxing beautifully, I might add, he had no answer for that. He could have cut off the ring. He was bull rushing. He looked bullish. Um, and then it got to the point where, I mean, there was a point, I'm not going to say there was, there were maybe a round or two where it was a little negative and it was like, okay, you know, the ref was like, okay, you guys got to get, you know, you guys got to get this, um, get the shit back on the road. You know, you guys got to do what you got to do. Um, so you at least made an adjustment, you know, he's, you know, obviously he's not, I mean, he's not got to, you know, go trade blow for blow because, I mean, hey, that's stupid. He's not playing, he, he, then he wouldn't be playing to this strength, he'd be playing to sell this strength. And, you know, you didn't, the last thing you knew was just the guy to come in there with his caveman box and try to take your head off. Um, but he made an adjustment, and then he started sitting on his punches more, lighting him up, um, throwing triple hooks. I mean, he doubled up with his right hand. Um, in the 10th round, he pretty much had Southern ready to go. And I was like, oh, man, he, like, he's busting him up. Like, this is good. This is the type of stuff that this is stuff I want to see. You know, you gotta, you know it's, oh, it's great to fight off your back foot, but you got to be able to punish the guy, too. And that's what he was doing in the 10th round. Selden though was tough. He's tough. He took those punch. He took those punches. I mean, you know, I thought he was pretty much ready to go. Um, but uh, yeah, I came out of that fight. I came out watching like Selden needs to um, a go back to the drawing board, um, find someone to teach him how to box, find someone to teach him how to cut off the damn ring, find someone to teach him how to actually make an adjustment, find someone to actually make him you know, for him to throw a jab or something like that. Something to set up, you know, something. Um, and uh, hey, whoever is his brain trust or whoever is backing him up, um, trying to build him up, you might not want to keep putting him in against slick fighters, fighters that can fight off the back foot, because that is exactly how you kill a draw, how you kill a prospect. People aren't going to see, and this is one of those fights that could have. Now, obviously, you least didn't knock him out, but you blooded him up. Now, imagine. If at least who I don't even think is a top 145, 140 um, uh, pound fighter, you know, you know if he, you know if he actually fought a top, a top one, who pretty much who anyone with any superior, superior technique would have busted selling up some more, probably even stopped them too. Um, so yeah, HBO yeah, going forward until the guy gets a little better, uh, like I said it would probably do better to actually just you know to do some very careful matchmaking. So he doesn't get exposed. I mean, Ulysses is a good prospect himself, but you know, if you have him, if you put him in there with a journeyman who knows how to fight, it could be of, it could be a little bit more damaging than just the loss that he took last night. Um, and he's an HBO fighter too. Like he's doing the print. So this was the this was the first of the A side losses, so to speak. Um, as for Ulysses, I I came away impressed. Um, like I said, he boxed beautifully. He knocked him down three times. And then after a lull, which you know he's just trying to not get caught by the bum rush, by the bull rushes of Selden, he made an adjustment and started tagging him, start you know really putting some hurt to him, and I was impressed, you know, and I, hopefully I do see him on other HBO telecasts like in the near future, 
Like I think he'd be a really good addition to the 140 division, which is definitely on the, which is definitely a division on the road to rebuild. So um, yeah, so those are my thoughts on that fight. Uh, the second fight was Antoine Douglas versus Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Um, for Antoine, this was his first fight I've seen on national TV since 2016. I believe, and that's when he fought uh, he fought Cassides in that fight in Showtime, and he took a beating and a half, so so thorough beating that he took that he laid off boxing for a year, which in hindsight is a good idea, you know, you know you don't want a young fighter getting too grown, you know, getting being like that and being rushed back in the ring like four or five months later. You know, he took some time off, and I thought, okay, you know, he takes some off, you know, recover, and then you know maybe you know uh, tighten up some of your boxing skills even more. And then he had fought three fights um, on television, but I'd never seen them, any of them. But I assumed, they were, I assumed like I said, they were all knockout wins. And I'm like, okay, you know, the guy's back and he's focused. Um, Gary so Spike was and I've only seen maybe a handful of times. Um, nothing really special. I mean, nothing, you know, no frills or anything like that. Um, I saw his last fight in Boston, I believe. Um, that was the last time I saw him, and it's like, like I said, no, he, I mean, he, he, he punches pretty good, but nothing that I would say that would compare to the type of talent that uh, Douglas showed, who uh, is getting the backing by HBO. Oh, how wrong I was. Um, Douglas from the first round uh, didn't was not interested in boxing the guy. I mean, he went, he, he, he rarely went to the fight, which just wore on his mind. And also, one was just had, was happy to oblige. And, and, and the funny thing is too, the, the Canadian crowd was so so quiet during this. Like they, they cause those two were training some some serious shots. And I'm thinking to myself, like this cannot go ten rounds. This this can't. And then I'm seeing. Um, uh, and then and then after you know Sullivan. I mean, he was landing. I mean, first he was landing some really basic shots, and then he started really putting some muscles on his shots. And I'm like, these are some basic shots that Douglas shouldn't be taking. Like he was taking these shots. And Roy, and Roy Jones, excuse me. And Roy Jones was like, "Hey, no, you can't be doing this. Like you can't be taking these shots. You can't, you know, use your talent." And and it's like Douglas has the talent, but I just don't know what he was doing. He was just it was just round after round, just taking these shots and bodying himself, and then. The way he was taking these shots was his eye too. It was like he was taking these shots, and then it was like his eyes were vacant. He was just taking it. It was like this isn't good. Like um, I was just waiting to the health man to go down to zero. And I think that happened in the seventh round. And then you know he's on the ropes like he had been before. Sullivan, Sullivan, come with some shots, and he teed off him. It was just like it was just like the proceedings fight. Boom, 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 and then he falls. Like out, you know, and I'm thinking like he's out cold, but he actually gets up. He gets to sleep before ten, but the referee is like, referee was smart. I was like, yeah, this is uh, this fight is done. Um, so it was just it was a huge win for Osella. I mean, because he knocked off. I mean, he had all these rankings, um, Douglas. And so it was, you know, and, I mean, he did what he had to do. Um, kudos to him, um, Douglas. I just I think now is probably finished. Um, I mean, I, I thought maybe the, the the three fights that he had were just like, you know, increased his skill, but apparently there were just people who just probably had some weak chins. I mean, that's all I could think about that. And, um, yeah, I just don't see, I just don't see it. Like, I mean, the, the way he looked in the ring was just the way I thought um, when I saw, when I see Glenn Tapia, when he got ruined by, by James Kirkland, I'm like, that's, that's the, 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 the stuff that I saw in the stuff from Tapia, is the stuff I'm seeing from, uh, from Douglas. I, I don't think there is going to be, I mean, he, he may win some fights, but I don't think he'll ever win a significant fight again. I, I just don't see it. Um, and, and I think he, I think, I think he's I think um, ruined the guy. Um, so I mean I I mean personally I, I don't I'd say I don't see a long future for Douglas and you know he should probably start looking so elsewhere looking at something else to do um, but uh, yeah I, I just don't see it because he's, he's just gonna get hurt if he continues so and then uh, we have the main event we have um, David Lemieux former IBF middleweight champion versus Billy Joe Sonnes the current WBO middleweight champion. Um, I was hoping for a good clash of boxing 
and brawling, you know, between that, you know, uh, you know, at, you know, I was hoping for it, and I was hoping Lemieux would be up to task, but seeing him in the win on Friday, you looked at he was just gaunt and emaciated. it. You're like, okay, this is, again, you know, he's uh, draining weight again improperly. Um, and he looked terrible, and I'm thinking to myself, so this guy's probably going to come in the ring just ultra heavy, and then pretty much he gained like 20 pounds overnight. He looked, I mean, he looked terrible um, uh, physically. Um, and then, yeah, Saunders, who also made the weight, but, you know, Saunders has never been the, Saunders, for the most part, has always looked normal. Normal, like, I mean, I mean, he looked big. Obviously, he's a good middleweight, but he looked more normal than Lemieux did. Um, this fight was just a schooling. Uh, it was an absolute positive schooling. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, Lemieux <laughs> couldn't cut off the ring on him, which I'm, which I found surprising. Didn't use a jab, which I even found even more surprising to set up his offense. It was just, I mean, Saunders boxed off his back foot, you know, hit him at will. Now, Saunders can crack a little bit. He's not a big puncher. He's not someone that's actually going for that knockout all the time. He doesn't do that. He'll box you until he's until until he sees it open, until he really sees it open to put you away. And um, I thought that would be in the second round because he, he did trap Lemieux in the second round. He caught him in the ropes. And then after that, and then a couple rounds later, he bust, started busting up Lemieux's nose and he landed lead uppercuts against him. Lemieux just couldn't, Lemieux made no adjustments. He couldn't do anything. I mean, except he tried to be more aggressive. You know, the other thing, he could, I guess, either I was hoping for Sonus to actually just, um, to wear down. But, um, yeah, it was just absolutely nothing. It was just, it was just horribly one-sided. And, you, you know, he was stunning on him, you know, he was taunting him. It was, it was just bad. The crowd was not liking that at all. Um, yeah, so Saunders pretty much uh, won that running away. No pun intended. <laughs> um... I mean, that was an easy one, 20, 108. Now, I just want to talk briefly about courtesy rounds. Um, as I mentioned before, in the first fight with Selden and uh, Luis Jr., um, I didn't see one round go to Selden. I mean, that fight, was a, to me, was 100 to 87. And yet, there were two judges that actually saw the fight, um, that saw at least one round to actually give to Selden. And I and of course I wanted to see what the official I, I haven't seen what the official cards were to actually see which one was round where and I've been one of those rounds that had a lull in it, but Selden did not win a clear round at all. And then um in this fight too, courtesy round. This was another fight where I didn't think Lemieux won one round and then somehow the courtesy rounds were even worse than this one, whereas one judge scored a 118-110, which is two rounds, and then another judge scored a 117-111, giving three rounds, and I'm thinking to myself, what three rounds, what two or three rounds that you actually win? Seriously, what? And I'm like thinking to myself, like, and that, and that was bullshit. And I'm thinking to myself, if that fight had actually been a lot closer, I, I, I'm pretty sure the judgment would have been so interesting. But, um, yeah, Lemieux, at this point, I mean, he's still young. He needs a shake-up badly. He needs a horrific shake-up. Uh, he needs to obviously get a dietitian and probably shake up his training camp um, because I just don't see him. I mean, he's a one, he's becoming he's a one-trick pony, and that's, something he's, he, and that's something that could probably be corrected. Now, also, too, I'm thinking that 160 is probably not the way for him. I, only, I, mean, I think he's he's just really trying to stay there, but 150 is not 160 is not the way for him anymore. Um, it's clear, it's clear that's not because he's killing himself to make that weight. He's also just thinking about moving up to 168. Um, Saunders, however, is probably putting himself right in the thick of things. Um, it's pretty much now he's probably gonna be the next opponent for either someone the likes of. Either Triple G or the winner of Triple G, Canelo 2. Um, he's in the mix. And then, cause the reason why, because he holds the he holds the WO, WBO belt, which is the only belt not being held by Triple G right now. And he's not like, and, and can, he's not Canelo, whereas Canelo's the lineal champion in the division still. So, I mean, Saunders has, has, has a couple big paydays on his future, and uh, he's in a good position. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see how the how, how that plays out in 2018. But um, those were my thoughts on the HBO card, and like I said, I enjoyed watching it. You know, 
Uh, but it's just, you know, it's just crazy to me that the A sides and all on these fights, the all suffered losses. Um, some, you know, two of them one side is two of them one side is hell. So I mean, hey, that's boxing theater of the unexpected. So uh, I think this will probably be my last video of the year um, until you know until January. So sometime in January, I think it's either the, the Lucas card or somebody or. Lucas, yeah, it might be the Lucas card, the double header. So, yep. Until until then, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, Happy New Year. Get all that out in advance. All right, peace.